uh, this video of the beheading of Alan Henning released just a few hours ago. Professor Max Abrahams teaches at Northeastern University. He's also on the Council on Foreign Relations. He's the author of a recent article entitled, Does Terrorism Pay? An Empirical Analysis. Uh, Professor, what's the aim of the beheadings? Uh, apart from the clear barbarity, are they political in terms of their statement or do they have a strategic aim? Sure. Well, I mean, uh, terrorists, by definition, uh, have expressed political grievances. And there's a real irony about terrorism, because on the one hand, to be terrorists, they have some sort of a strategic or political demand for governments to be conciliatory, for governments to make concessions, for example, to get out of Syria or to get out of Iraq. But the paradox is that in the face of terrorism, when people like Foley or Henning or Satloff or Haynes have their heads chopped off. Governments don't become more conciliatory, quite the opposite. They tend to go on the offensive. And we've seen the American public get mobilized precisely because ISIS is chopping off our journalists' heads. And yet Turkey managed to extricate almost 50 hostages from Syrian territory. How did it do that? Well, that's a very good question, and frankly, it, it remains a bit of a mystery. But I think that Turkey has much better relations with ISIS and with Nusra than, say, the United States or the UK does. Um, and so they've exploited those relationships and may have some sort of a tacit understanding where ISIS would release their hostages, and in response, Turkey would not become a full member of the coalition. Just a few minutes ago, one of your colleagues at Georgetown University, uh, Professor Scheuer, I put it to him that if ground troops went in to fight IS, would they win? And he was pretty emphatic and said, no, they wouldn't. What do you think? Well, I think it's moot in the sense that the United States is not going to be providing a lot of ground forces. This, after all, is the Obama administration, which came to power, you know, uh, campaigning against Bush's uh, Iraq strategy. Uh, for in, in Iraq right now, we do have forces on the ground, and they're making a lot of progress. The Peshmerga forces, the Iraqi federal forces, some Shia militia helped out with U.S. airstrikes. Together, that combination in Iraq is working. In Syria, there are no ground troops. There are these moderate forces who won't be trained uh, for another year, and even then, there will only be about 5,000 of them, and they don't like the United States, and we're hardly even talking with them. So there, there really is no game in town in terms of ground forces in Syria. Do you think in any way the airstrikes are in fact counterproductive and maybe bringing more support to Islamic State? Yes, and in fact, there is evidence of that. You know, there were, there were all these rival groups operating in Syria in particular. Nusra was, is a very big one. That's al-Qaeda's affiliate there. And then there's the ISIS group, um, which has distanced itself from al-Qaeda. But since the United States has been uh, leading this coalition of airstrikes in Syria, we see evidence that the groups are actually merging. Um, and that's a real problem, particularly because Nusra has more popular support on the ground in Syria then does ISIS. And so now the population is very torn about whether or not it wants the United States getting involved there at all.